Finite state machines are very useful tools for pattern matching. And in this example, we're going to explain how to use a finite state machine for pattern matching and show an example written in Java. Finite state machines are mathematical directional graphs. State or vertices and transitions are graph transitions. So let's assume I want to see if a string ends with a certain pattern. We want to know if the string ends with an at sign followed by a series of digits and finally a number sign. So here are some examples at three number sign, at one two three four four number sign, at zero one one two number sign. So we want to know if a string ends in a pattern like this. We can build a finite state machine that models this pattern. Now, if you don't use a finite state machine solution, you might want to try to code something where you look for ats and number signs and take the characters in between, maybe try to convert them to an integer. And if it converts successfully, you think you have the pattern. Uh, if it doesn't convert successfully, you assume that there's maybe not a, a maybe there's a letter or character or something inside of um, that substring of characters. Uh, however, if the series of digits is really big, a really big integer, you might get overflow. Uh, so this certainly isn't a trivial algorithm to write. Using the finite state machine approach, we start with each state of the pattern. So we begin at state zero. And if we get, if the next character is an at sign we move to state one so every time you see a transition line whatever character or characters is on the transition line shows you how to transition so after reading the next character if it's an at sign we transition to state one in state one if we get a digit a zero to nine we transition to state two if in State two, we get a zero to nine. We stay in state two. So it could be a two digit number or a three digit number or a 100 digit number. Uh, from state two, if the next digit is an at sign, uh, that's the beginning of the pattern. So we go back to state one. Because it could be two at signs in a row followed by digits and a number sign. From state two, if we see a number sign, we move to state three. And in state three, if we see an at sign, we go back to state one that begins the pattern. Uh, so it could be an at sign, number sign, one, two, three, number sign. Uh, and it's kind of implied that at any state, if you see a, if the next character is a character not on a transition line, that it automatically goes back to state zero. So if we're at state two and the next character is a B, the letter B, there's no transition line leaving state two for letter B. So it's implied it goes back to state zero. OK, now we can look at the Java code of how this is implemented. Here is the code to implement the finite state machine. Here in the first line, we have the string. And that'll be whatever string we're going to see if it possesses the pattern. Uh, you notice here, uh, this string does. There's a, an at sign followed by digits followed by a number sign at the end of the string. Um, for simplicity, I made a variable called digits, which stores the digits. And we have a variable called state, which starts at state 0. Uh, there's a for loop that basically loops through each character of the string, starting from left to right. And just like in the, in the graph, if we're at state 0 uh, and the next character is an at sign, we move to state one. And then everything else in the body of the loop is an if else, so it would skip. And we get the next character. Uh, if we're in state one, and the next character is a digit, we'll go to state two. Uh, if it is an at sign, we'll stay in state one. Anything else will go back to state zero. If we're in state two and the next character is a number sign, we move to state three. If it is a digit, we stay in state two. 
If it is an at sign, we move back to state 1. Anything else, we go to state 0. And finally, in state 3, if the character is a at sign, we go back to state 1. Anything else, we go back to state 0. And when the for loop ends, if we are in state 3, we know that the string matches. If we're not in state 3, if we're in any other state, the string does not match the pattern. So we can run this, and it says it will match. We can add many, many, many digits in here. We'll say that it matches. If I take out the at sign, it should say it does not match because there's no at sign followed by digits. Does not match. If I put in the at sign and the letter R, it does not match. Um, if I take out the R and put a series of at signs, it should say that it does match. Uh, and you can try various tests. And that's how you can use a finite state machine for string pattern matching. Uh, and when you write the code, it's pretty simple and pretty elegant solution to this type of problem.